Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. Pivotal Cloud Foundry had made some of the Spring Cloud components available as managed services, which means we don't have to create a Eureka server for service registry. PCF has made it available as a managed service, which you can bound to your application and use it readily without any configuration. Let us go ahead and create a Spring Boot application and try to use this service registry. For this, click on File, New, Spring Startup Project. Uh, give a name for your Spring Boot application. I'm going to name it as Simple Client. Uh, the group, package, everything, let it be the same. And then in the available list search box, search for Pivotal Cloud Foundry. You will see three differences available here. One is Config Client, Service Registry, and Circuit Breaker. Click on Service Registry and then click on next finish let us go to form.xml and take a look at what kind of differency was added for pivotal cloud foundry components all right i'm here at the form.xml of my newly created spring boot application you could see there, there's only one dependency added that is io.pivotal.spring.cloud and the artifact ID is Spring Cloud Services Starter Registry Service. If you scroll down, you'll see a couple of dependency management. One is for the Spring Cloud and the other is Pivotal Spring Cloud, which is automatically added for us. Now, let us go to the simple client application and let's enable Eureka client here. All right, we have enabled the Eureka client. Now let us create a simple controller and let us try to write a get mapping. All right, so I created a very simple controller with just a get mapping and it is going to return a string saying, welcome to Pivotal Cloud Foundry. We don't have to do any configurations here because all the configurations are managed by the service registry of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Next, let us add the Pivotal Cloud Foundry managed services to our space. You have to go to the marketplace and you will see the list of available managed services. Let us search for service registry. All right, we have the service registry here. Click on this and select the trial plan. Let us give a custom name for the service registry. I'm going to name it as service icon registry. It will be added to my development space. I don't have any applications running, so it will not be bounded to any application. And I'll leave the other configurations as default. Let us create one. All right. So the service registry has been successfully created. It will take some time to you know create all the inbound uh, applications and other components inside the service registry. So let us move on to our Eclipse and let us create our manifest file for deployment into Cloud Foundry. So right click the project, go to new, click on file and create a manifest YAML file. I'm going to name my application as simple client. Uh, next, let us decide on the instances. 
uh, in this case i'm going to be little greedy i'm going to say i want seven instances of simple client created and i want memory to be 1g that is 1gb then let us give the path for our build it's going to be inside target slash we haven't built the project yet let's build that and then let's give the name here Alright, our build is successfully generated. Now let us give the jar name in our manifest YAML. Alright, we have the necessary elements that are needed to deploy a Spring Boot application into Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Before that, let us take a look at our console and let us see whether our service registry has been successfully created or not. All right, our service registry has been successfully created. Now let us go inside the service registry and click on manage. When you clicked on manage, a service registry console opens up, which is almost as similar as your Eureka server that you would create in a Spring Boot application. As of now, we don't have any applications registered to this Eureka server. So we see a message here, no application registered. Once we deploy our Spring client into the Pivotal Cloud Foundry, this place should have the number of instances and the registry should have been updated. Let us go on to a console and let us try to push our Spring Boot application to Portal Cloud Foundry. All right, so the cloud controller has started to do this job. All right, so the application has been successfully deployed to Portal Cloud Foundry, and you could see here seven instances of this application has been created. Let us go to the Portal console. A simple client is here and you could see here someone instances has been created and is running now let us go to our service registry and still we don't see it here why is so because we created the service in our development space but we never bounded that to the application so let's go and bind that such service to our simple client in order to do that go inside the simple client and click on services then click on bind service, select service registry and click on bind. So the service instance, service registry created and successfully bound to simple client. You need to restage your application to ensure that the service binding is made available to your app. So let us restage our application now. It is going to restage the containers and it is going to restart our application. Our application is successfully started and now let's switch to the service registry tab. When I switch to the service registry tab, immediately you could see here the simple client is now available as a registered application in the service registry console. And when I click on this plus sign, you'll see all the available instances that has been registered to the service registry of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So do you see that now that with very minimal and little configurations, we have our instances deployed into Pivotal Cloud Foundry and we also have a service registry which takes care of the job that the Eureka server was doing for us in our Spring Boot application. Now let us go ahead and try to access this URI and let us see whether our get mapping is working or not. Let me go back to the Pivotal Web Services console and I'm going to click on the routing URL here. All right. I'm getting a login page, but we never configured login page in our application. Why is it coming here? And I don't even know the username and password for this. This is because by default, when you added all the Pivotal Cloud Foundry's dependencies, the security is 
enabled by default. You have to go and disable the security or else you have to configure the authentication mechanism to access your services. Let's go ahead and disable the security in our application. There is a common key which you can use to disable the security. Security.basic.enable. Let's make it false. We are getting an error here. Let us take a look at this error. The property security.basic.enable is deprecated. The security auto configuration is no longer customizable. Provide your own web security configurer pin instead. Okay, so looks like this security key will not work. We have to write our own configuration. Let us go and try to add those things. I'm going to delete this key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package which is going to hold my configurations. Web security configure adapter, and you need to add the configuration annotation as well as enable web security. Let's quickly take a look into this web security configure adapter. This is the method that we need. So let's override this method in our config. So what I have done here is I have overridden the configure method inside the web security configure parent adapter class and then the implementation that I have done is to permit all the requests that comes to the simple client. But before you go and run this application, you need to add a dependency in your form.xml. If you don't add the dependency, it will throw an error. The build will not get generated successfully. Let us go to the form.xml and let us add that dependency. All right. So you need to add the Spring Boot Starter Security dependency in your form.xml. Now, let us quickly change the manifest YAML and let's add our service here. Alright, our service registry has been now added to the manifest YAML. And let us go ahead and build this application. Alright, the build is successful. Now let us push this application into Cloud Foundry. Alright, all our seven instances are up and running. Let's move on to our web console now. The service registry status looks good. Let's go to our application and let's click on the route URL. Well, now we are getting our get mapping working fine. Welcome to Pyotr Cloud Foundry. With this, we have completed this video on how to use the service registry managed service of Pyotr Cloud Foundry with a Spring Cloud application. In our next video, let us try to use the districts managed service of Pyotr Cloud Foundry and let us try to see how the application works with the managed services. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more such videos.